Microscopes and microscopes, the first thing uh, we need to do is have a little reminder about magnifying glasses, which were a single lens thing that we used in conjunction with our eye. So the job of a magnifying glass is to increase the angular magnification. And the way that it does this is basically you take the magnifying glass and you put it so close to the object that you want to look at, that the object is tucked just inside the focal length. So here's an object, I'm going to put it right inside the focal length. And then basically, if you look at the thin lens equation, if you have an object near a focus, all hell breaks loose. Right? So I could do this visually with some rays. I have one that comes in parallel out through the focus, and then let's just do straight through. And you can see that this is actually a surprisingly good drawing is if you really squint, these are pretty close to parallel. And when they do make it together, this um, converge to form a virtual image, virtual on this side of the focus, it's going to be a really, really big image. So what you do is you tuck the thing inside the focal length, and then you're going to get this whopping big virtual image, and it makes it look big. right? So that's how a magnifying glass works. So remember that. That's one of the basic elements of a telescope and a microscope. So what is the goal of a telescope? Well, the goal of a telescope, to be really specific about it, is to magnify a thing. But I want to magnify a thing that's at infinity. right? You don't effectively at infinity or infinity. You don't use a telescope to look down at a piece of paper. You look uh, through a telescope to see something that's very far away. So what we want to do is magnify something at infinity. Or close to it. And this is going to stress our drawings um, with just pure objects. So I'm going to actually take this as an excuse to talk about something that we've so far swept under the rug, which is the fact that if you don't have a single object and you don't have, well, let me, yeah. If you don't have a single object, I'll actually make this look more true to scale. I'll put this, the objective lens over here. Um, You want to see like an actual thing, right? In our case, maybe we want to look at the Andromeda galaxy with our telescope. And the Andromeda galaxy is somewhere up here. Um, this is not a single object. And it's probably not going to be oriented directly along the principal axis. So what I could imagine doing is tilting this up, which is also a nicer way of visualizing light coming in from infinity. This is still light from infinity. The thing's really far away. If I had two light rays that left, you know, even the same star, one of the, you know, 200 billion stars in the Andromeda galaxy, they'd basically come out parallel. So these things are actually going to converge at the focus, and I'm going to tilt it up so that there is a thing that looks like an image. So here's the focal length, and I'll call it O because what this is known as is the objective lens. And the objective lens, in some sense, is the one that's kind of doing all the work. It's really big. It's collecting a lot of light. Um, so these things are going to converge at the focus. But me, by virtue of tilting this thing up, <clears throat> I've created, so they're going to come through here. And I'm going to create an image where they basically pass through. So this is just. Short story is I don't want to draw this picture. Light coming in from infinity all converges at the focus, the picture that we've drawn a whole bunch of times. So I'm going to tilt this part up, which tilts that part down, and I can identify it as an image in that way. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically, I took this image and I tilted it up, so I have something that we can consider to be an object for the next lens. Okay. So I've got this. It's located at the focal point of the objective lens. And then what I want to do is I want to get as good of a look at this as possible. right? So I've taken a lot of light from infinity. I've collected a whole bunch of it in my objective lens. And I've focused it at the focus. And now I'm just going to put an eyepiece there so I can see it in as much detail as I possibly can. 
So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to take this and do that. So I'm going to tuck it right inside the focus of the eyepiece. So there's a second converging lens. This is Fe for I. called the eyepiece, and it's got a focal length there, and basically I just put it here. And the nice thing about telescopes is you really don't need to do too much focusing because all the stuff you're looking at is at the same distance at infinity. If you do have to do some adjustments, odds are it you know, has more to do with your personal eye. Right? So then what I would do is, you know, if I wanted to, I could redraw this picture, but the difference in between the magnifying glass and the telescope is simply that we have not an object here, but we have an image here. And the image is formed by a really big lens that collects a lot of light, so you can see things that are very far away. Um, and just as kind of a cultural note, it turns out the magnification of, I may have gotten that backwards. I don't think I got that right. It's O. The magnification of a telescope, one of these classical refracting telescopes, is the ratio of um, the eyepiece to the objective lens. No, I kept doing it wrong. Objective lens to eyepiece focal lengths. So you could get this up to, I think, that one of the biggest uh, refracting telescopes, the Yerkes telescope. Um, it's got like a 40-inch mirror. I think this gets up to like 190 magnification, 190 times. So, but you don't have to know this, just kind of a cultural note. Um, you don't see too many of these type of telescopes. So these like goofy, long refracting telescopes that seem more like they're from a cartoon. And usually what you actually have is a mirror here and the eyepiece is off at the side, so you don't have to sit in this dangerous location down here. Um, what you see more often is a Newtonian reflect reflector. And what Newton realized, and we haven't talked about this yet, but this will be a pretty good segue to it, is that lenses kind of stink. So we keep saying thin lens, thin lens, thin lens. What happens if you don't have a thin lens is you actually suffer from what's called spherical aberration, is that spheres actually don't have foci. Parabolas have foci. And so technically, if this had a perfect focus, it would need to be, you wanted it to have a perfect focus, it would need to be a parabolic lens. And so for a spherical lens, there's almost like a focal blob, not a focal point. And if you want to do anything precise, it kind of gets in your way of doing that. Um, the second issue with, and the Newtonian reflector isn't going to help with that to either, because it's going to also be made out of a sphere. The second issue that we haven't talked about is that different colors of light actually have different indices of reflect, refraction. So the whole idea of a prism that breaks light up into its constituent colors and makes a pretty rainbow is the idea that blue light and red light actually have different indices of refraction. Problem for glass, glass is dispersive, glass will spread your white light into a rainbow like a prism, not a problem for a mirror. So Newton embarked on this idea that maybe instead of this, I could have a mirror. What's the problem with using a mirror to image your light from infinity and look at this distant galaxy? Well, the problem is the light's going to come in and the light's going to reflect. It's going to come to a focal point, so that part I have no problem with. So light comes in from infinity, light focuses at the focal point. Well, the problem is, is my head's in the way if I want to look at this. So what he realized is that you can pay the price of putting a little mirror here. And this is a circular mirror that shows up in the center of the reflector. And taking this, let me redraw this a little bit, and sending this to your eyepiece. So if you ever look at, uh, you know, most if not all telescopes that you'll see still in operation. There are a few exceptions. But they're actually based on mirrors instead of lenses to deal with this problem of, uh, ref of um, the chromatic aberration of light separating into its constituent colors. The price you pay for having a Newtonian reflector or any sort of reflector is the fact that there's a part of your mirror that's uh, covered by the secondary mirror. 
So this thing might be about 10 meters across for the big telescopes in Hawaii, for instance. Okay. So if you understand telescopes, mirrors are actually, are, uh, microscopes are really not that much different. The only real difference is the fact that you're not constantly looking at something that's located at infinity. What you're looking at is something that's quite close and you have the liberty to move it even closer if you'd like to. Um, so technically these are what are called compound microscopes. And I will do my best to draw this. So there's an eyepiece. And there's some mirrors shuttling the eyepiece around. And then you have your choice of maybe a couple of objective lenses. And then there's a tray. And sitting on that slide tray is an object. To be examined. And it's really the same deal. So the role of the eyepiece is to take an image from the objective lens. You move this so that the objective lens creates an image of this tucked right inside the focus of the eyepiece. And the eyepiece's job is basically just to act like, um, act like a magnifying glass. So what I'll do is I'll tilt this so it looks more like our traditional diagrams and just let you know what the degree of freedom you suddenly have is so you've got an objective lens and the objective lens has a focus and what I want to do is I want to observe an object. So this thing isn't at infinity. In fact, it's probably much closer than infinity. So maybe it's here. And using the terminology we introduced when we talked about compound, um, compound optical instruments in general, this would be the object distance before it interacts with the first lens. So this thing's going to go through. It's going to make an image, in this case, a real inverted image. But it's not going to be at the, at the uh, objective lens's focal length. So if it were at infinity, it would make a, an image right here. But it's not. It's closer. So maybe it might make an object here, or an image there, excuse me. All right, so this would be di1. So now what we have to do with a compound microscope that we didn't have to do with a telescope is this needs to change length significantly. And this needs to change length significantly, the distance in between the lenses, so that I can do my trick. And my trick is I want to move the eyepiece so that this thing is tucked right inside the focal length for the eyepiece. So right here is where I want to be. And then my eye can take over. So really, that's the only difference in between the two of them. And if you want to analyze how this turns into this, um, you know, the good news is, is all you need is the, um, the thin lens equation. There's nothing really special about um, even the magnifying glass part, what I would have to do is I would have to, for instance, tell you precisely what we're doing. Like, you know, maybe Fe is 10 centimeters, and it turns out that this thing is located, you know, like a couple of millimeters inside of it. So those are two applications, but the good news is, is again, you don't have to know anything that's not um, the thin lens equation that we've already discussed and the definition of lateral magnification. Right.